Well, we have been standing by for our next guest. He is John Lipsky, the acting chief of the International Monetary Fund, took over when Dominique Strauss-Kahn uh, resigned. Uh, Mr. Lipsky, great to have you on the program. We've also got Mike McKee here uh, joining in as well. Uh, John, I've got to start with you on Greece, because we had the head of the Eurozone finance ministers, Jean-Claude Juncker, uh, saying that there's a possibility that the IMF will not release its next, next installment or payment to Greece because it's not hitting its debt targets. Is this true? Well, we have an arrangement with the Greek authorities, supported with, uh, by ourselves, with our European partners, uh, that uh, contemplates certain uh, performance uh, criteria for dispersal of funds. We have a, a team in Athens right now discussing with the Greek authorities the situation and outlook, and those, uh, those conversations are, are ongoing. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Juncker and Carolyn Atkinson said yesterday, who works for you, that uh, at this point the Greeks may not get the money. How serious is that possibility? Well, as I said, it, it's pretty straightforward. There are there are conditions and, cri and uh, criteria associated with the dispersal of funds, and the, uh, the our our staff, along with European uh, colleagues, are in Athens right now in discussions with the Greek authorities. But those discussions are ongoing. So, so you don't know yet. Then what you're saying, John, is that you're you're not you don't know quite yet from the information that you have whether or not Greece is in fact on track to refinance and to meet its debt targets. You don't know that yet. Those, those discussions are underway right now. Okay, when will they? When will they be finished? When do you think you will know? No, no set timetable. But we're in active, active conversations with the Greek authorities. That's the purpose of this, uh, of this visit. Well, after Mr. Juncker's comments and Carolyn Atkinson's comments, the markets priced in a 71 percent chance of a Greek default into credit default swaps. Are the markets wrong? Well, the, the markets, uh, I guess the, the swap prices are what they are. Uh, but remember, uh, not saying anything right or wrong, but remember six months ago, the markets were convinced that if the Portuguese authorities entered into a program with the, uh, with the IMF and the European partners, that Spain would have to, would immediately be uh, involved. And uh, they changed their mind on that. So uh, markets changed their minds. Uh, John, let me just run for you. Um, you know, yesterday we played a, a soundbite from uh, the Greek Prime Minister, George Papandreou. He was speaking at the OECD. I just want you to hear uh, what he had to say there. Please, leave us in peace. We know we've, we have problems. We're changing Greece. Greece is changing. We will be on track. We will make it. We will do what is necessary. Leave us in peace to be able <laughs> to, do, uh, to bring Greece out of this crisis, and we'll do so. Uh, he obviously sounds quite agitated. Um, what is your reaction to that? Well, that's uh, exactly uh, why we were uh, happy and willing to support the Greek authorities in their very uh, ambitious and strenuous adjustment program, because uh, we could see that the senior Greek authorities, including the prime minister, were committed to making the changes in uh, Greek economic policy and the Greek economy that were necessary to uh, both first steady the situation and return Greece to a, a uh, path of strong and sustainable growth. So the, uh, the prime minister's words were consistent exactly with, uh, with our program and with our expectations. John, are European banks strong enough to withstand a sovereign default? You've got a lot of problems there. Or could one or more of them have problems if, if one of the countries can't pay its bills? Oh, let's, let's not get into hypotheticals. And also remember that the uh, European authorities are, as we speak, engaged in a stress testing of their banks with exactly with the goal of making sure that they are adequately capitalized and able to deal uh, with the, any eventuality that might face them. But do you think they can, the Greeks can actually meet their goals, or is this just kicking the can down the road till those stress tests are finished and the banks are recapitalized? No, no, Mike, we, we have a very specific arrangement and agreement with the Greek authorities, and that's what we're discussing today in Athens. Uh, John, let me just turn to, uh, obviously, the uh, process going on right now with uh, replacing uh, Dominique Strauss-Kahn. First off, uh, is his absence having any type of impact on these negotiations and talks that you're having with the, with the countries uh, that are receiving IMF funds? Is there any type of impact from his absence? 
Well, let, let's put it like this. You wouldn't call this business as usual. Obviously, uh, the situation is what it is. Uh, on the other hand, the IMF was not uh, one person, no matter how talented. It's a team of dedicated and highly talented uh, uh, professionals who are dedicated to uh, fulfilling the responsi important responsibilities of the institution. Uh, we are actively engaged across a broad front of important issues with, uh, with member countries and, for example, today uh, with my presence here at the G8. I think it speaks for itself, but uh, certainly you can ask our members uh, if they think we're doing our job. That's what we're dedicated to making sure that we are. Now, the Europeans say that with their problems underway, they need another European in charge of the IMF because only a European can deal with it. But we went through the Latin American debt crisis in the 80s and the Asian crisis in the 90s without a Latin American or an Asian running the IMF. So isn't that a red herring? It doesn't really matter who's in charge of the IMF. You don't need someone to deal with this. Well, let me make two things clear. One is that the selection process for a new managing director is the responsibility entirely of our membership, not of the IMF management and staff. So I personally and my colleagues are divorced from this, are separate from this, uh, this process. Secondly, the executive directors representing our 187 member countries have agreed on a specific process that is designed to be open, transparent, and merit-based. And I'm quite confident that they will choose a highly skilled, highly talented, and very effective new leader for this institution. John, I know you're focused on the task at hand, but have you considered or are you considering vying for the top job yourself? I'm considering filling my, my responsibilities right now and making sure that this institution is, uh, is responding to but the you, very important demands that face it right you, now. But would you rule out your own and candidacy? I, I, I wouldn't want to get this. I wouldn't want to get... I wouldn't want to get distracted at these, with these matters. I'm focused on my job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last question, John. Uh, how concerned are you that this is going to turn into a struggle between emerging market countries and developed countries as to who gets the top job? Uh, how damaging could that be to the IMS? Oh, this isn't, as I said, this is entirely an issue for our membership. There's a very clear process that has been defined. Uh, I'm sure there will be a lively discussion among a debate regarding some very talented and capable individuals. And I'm sure that uh, so far all the candidates who have been placed in nomination are, are very qualified. So we're very confident that the outcome is going to be a positive one for this institution and for its membership. John, I appreciate you spending the time with us. Thank you very much. John Lipsky, the acting, uh, acting chief of the IMF.